Okay, so we're going to, in this video, we're going to look at some examples of doing inverse Laplace transforms. We have our problems here. They're already functions of s, and we want to turn them back into functions of t. We have our Laplace transform table, and these are just the basic ones again. And again, your Laplace transform table may look slightly different depending on um, the textbook, different textbooks include sometimes more or fewer functions. Uh, so remember what we need to do to do the inverse Laplace transform is we need to match up the expression that we have that most closely fits whatever formulas we have in the Laplace transform column and then can use those formulas to convert them back to the original functions of t. So in our initial example we have 3 over s to the fifth. And the function that this looks most like is the one with s to some power in the denominator. And that's going to be this function right here. Remember, n factorial is just a constant. And so we have s to some power. So this is going to be some function of t, t to the n. To figure out what n is, we look at the power. The power of s here is one power more than n. And so n is 4 because this is 5. Then what I'm going to do is I, I need to match up this constant right here. n factorial, in this case of n is 4, is going to be 24 because 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I don't have 24. So I'm going to pull my 3 out. And then in order to get the 24 in there, I'm going to divide the 3 by 24. And then I'm going to multiply the 1 in my numerator by 24. So that's going to give me essentially sorry, wrong button. 1 over 8, since 3 over 24 is 1 over 8, and then 24 over s to the fifth is going to give me this expression when n is 4. So this will become t to the fourth. Now, sometimes altering these coefficients can be um, seem somewhat trickier. Once you do a couple of examples, it's less difficult. Now, this is a somewhat simpler one. Here, the 5 is just a multiple. So I can just pull the 5 out. And then just match this up with one of my expressions. And if I look at my table, this very clearly is just a linear denominator. It's one factor. And a, because this is always a sign flip, a is going to be equal to negative 4. So 5 is my multiplier. And applying this function with a equal negative 4, I get 5e to the negative 4t. Now, most problems are going to be more difficult, and we're going to have to do some manipulation. Most of the time, we're going to have, or very frequently, we're going to have these um, rational functions, and we're going to have to manipulate them in order to get them to match up one of our formulas. Now, in this particular case, our denominator is a perfect square, and so we can complete the square. And then we have to find the function that's in our list that has this uh, linear factor squared in the denominator. And so if I go to my Laplace transforms, I get this function right here. So we've got a constant in the numerator, and I've got some linear factor raised to a power in the denominator. Now, in this case, since this is 1 power more than n, n is going to be equal to 1. So n 1 factorial is just 1, so I'm good there. Uh, and so what I end up with is this expression right here. This a goes in the exponent of e, which is going to be 6 in this case. And then the power of t that goes in here, we said n was 1 because this is 2. And so therefore, this expression is just going to be t times e to the 6t. So a is 6, 
because this is 6, and then this is 1 more than this exponent, so t to the 1. Okay, now we have something that's a little more difficult. Um, this factor in this, this quadratic in the denominator here does not factor. There are no factors of 5 who's, who have factors that sum to 2. And we can't use complex roots here. None of our, nothing in our table has complex um, solutions. So what we have to do is, not that you can't have those, they do have versions of the table, but that's not what we have. We have all real values here. So instead of trying to do the quadratic formula or something like that, uh, what we need to do in this case is we need to complete the square. So recall what we do is we take the, the linear term, we take the coefficient, we divide it by 2, and we square it. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. Square that, we get 1. So the perfect square portion is s squared plus 2s plus 1. And then we have 4 left over so that 1 plus 4 adds to 5. And then this can be rewritten as s plus 1 squared plus 4 left over. So now we go to our table. So we've got a linear factor squared and a constant. But we have only a constant up here. So that means we need the sign. If we had an s up here or a linear term up here, we would need that. Um, if this was an s up here, we would need to turn it into an s plus 1 in order to apply this formula. But here we just have a constant, so we're going to use the sine function. And what we're going to figure out from this is that this is b squared and this is b. So that's going to be uh, 2 is equal to b. So I'm going to have a sine 2t in my expression. And then the exponential portion, this is s minus a, and that goes a goes up here. But since the sign is flipped, my a value is going to be negative 1. And so I'm going to get e to the negative t and sine 2t. Okay, here's another example that's a little trickier. So we have this expression. We have a linear numerator. And this does factor in the denominator. So if we factor the denominator, we get s plus 6 and s minus 2. Um, in order to split these into separate expressions so that we can apply one of our functions, we have to use um, completing the um, partial fractions. And so I've done the math here already for us. And so what we do, remember, is we split our expression by the two factors, s plus 6 and uh, s minus 2. And then we give these arbitrary constants. And then we cross multiply, basically, to find a common denominator. And this expression has to be set equal to s plus 4. So here I foiled this out. a s 2a b s 6b has to be equal to s plus 4. And if we do that, the coefficients of s, which is a and b have to add up to the coefficient of s on this side, which is 1. And then my constant and my other constant have to add up to be the constant on this side, which gives me this expression. And if you solve this expression, you end up with a equals 1 quarter and b equals 3 quarters, which we get here. And now they're in a form where I can apply the exponential function that we applied earlier this one right here. And so now if I go ahead and apply that, then this becomes 1 quarter e to the negative 6t. So remember, the sign here always flips. And plus 3 quarters, just the constant. And then e to the positive 2. Now, once it's split, it's not that difficult. It's getting the split and the appropriate coefficients. 
And the last example that we're going to look at is with a perfect school with a unfactorable quadratic down here. So this cannot be completed as a perfect square. It's the sum of squares. And that means it's going to be a sine or a cosine function. If you have more than one term in the numerator, then you just split it so that it matches up in the denominator. So cosine needs s over s squared plus a squared. That's this term. And the sine needs a constant over s squared plus a squared. Now, in this case, the cosine is easy. It's just s over s squared plus a squared, where a is 3. So I get cosine 3t. But in this case, what I need is I need a 3. And I don't have a 3. I have a, th a, f a 4. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get 4 divided by 3 because I need the 4 and I don't have it. I need the 3 and I don't have it. And so in order to put it there, I'm going to divide my constant by 3. So let's, let's we write it out a little bit. s over s squared plus 9 doesn't change. But this one becomes 4 over 3, um, 3 over s squared plus 9. And so you can see, as we did before with the, the powers, the 3s cancel, and I'm left with 4 thirds as my coefficient, and then this is just sine 3t.